A poll released this week showed Secretary of State Gina Griswold in Jenna Griswold rather in second place uh, among Democrats seeking to unseat Senator Cory Gardner. Two important details we should be included here: one, the fact that the poll was conducted and partially funded by supporters of Griswold, and two, Griswold has not announced that she would run for U.S. Senate. The poll also revealed that 23 percent would favor former House Speaker Andrew Romanoff, who was in first place among the candidates. Uh, David, who is this better news for? Andrew Romanoff, who came in first place in kind of this wacky setup poll, or Jenna Griswold, who at the very least would seemingly be considering? We shall have, have to see. Speaking of grandstanders who don't, aren't very good at their current job and then want to go into the Senate to do some more grandstanding, um, there's already two very strong candidates and, and a number of others um, who, who deserve a look in running in the Democratic Senate race. And if Coloradans want an effective senator, they are, obviously they have one with Cory Gardner, but if they want a de an effective Democratic senator, uh, they already have two gold star candidates, uh, Mike Johnston and Andrew Romanoff, both of whom had very successful records in the Colorado legislature of getting things done and of taking the hard work of being a legislator seriously and being very skilled and adept at it. And I don't think it's any wonder that Romanoff is in first place now among voters who have, especially who have some memory. Uh, he became Speaker of the House of Colorado, did a very good job at that from a Democratic point of view, really understood the rules, how, how, how you move bills along. And after he left the legislature, he went to uh, run a mental health advocacy organization in Colorado. Uh, so with, with, with Johnston and Romanoff, I think it's hard to see a compelling case for Griswold unless you want you know, an, an AOC type character uh, rather than a serious legislator. Uh, Natasha, do we, do we get really any good solid information for anybody with a poll uh, uh, executed like this? No, I don't think so. Uh, what's interesting is it's, it, I'm not sure it's an apples to apples comparison. This feels more like an apples to oranges, um, almost a wish list of candidates. But if that's the re direction they wanted to go, I would have liked to see a few more names put into that mix as well. Like these are possible people who could run. I mean, Chauncey Billups, uh, John Elway, <laughs> yeah. whoever else. I mean, that's kind of what this feels like. If someone hasn't, hasn't actually said they are running, then why were they included with the other candidates? However, I'm not a pollster. I'm sure they have lots of reasons for how they set this up, and I'm sure there is no perfect way to set up a poll. What I do think, it ho and what I hope it does bring attention to, is that there is a very large field of candidates that are running for this race, and it's worth getting to know all of them. So if people are looking at this and wondering, well, why did Jenna poll so well? Maybe it's time to start looking into who the rest of the people who are running and getting to know their platforms and seeing who you want or who they want to run in that, that slot. Uh, Joy, I remember when the, the poll came out and then the, uh, I saw the graphic actually used the whole page. It wasn't cut off where you can see the actual end of the, the graphic that says, you know, ask more about Jenna. So mm -hmm. it, it was, clearly it's kind of like, who do you want to see on CIO? I really like David. Well, what about Joey? Joey's mm -hmm. pretty good. Would you, would you like to see Joey if we had Joey on the show? Well, that's gonna, probably going to have more people that are going to vote for Joey. So uh, does, does this do anything for the Senate conversation knowing how the poll was structured? Well, it gets Jenna Griswold in the conversation, but you know, this race doesn't lack, if, if, if someone thinks that this race needs a qualified woman, this race doesn't lack for that. You know, she would be the eighth woman out of a 12 person field at this point, and we may not be done as, as Patty often talks about the clown car, this thing may, isn't full yet. You know, Jenna um, is six months into her first elected office and she may have a bright future, but I don't, I don't think the future is now. Um, you know, serve this term, see how it goes. But then on the other hand, she's the only woman who's been elected statewide. So maybe that gives, uh, you know, gives her more room to run, uh, to, to add more women to this field. You know, there are good candidates in the race already. You know, Dave mentioned a couple. Angela Williams just got in. Uh, Tricia Zornio, who I think is an up and comer, is in this race. Alice Madden is in this race. I don't think people are crying out other than Jenna's friends to, for her to get into this race. And I, I, I know uh, there are probably a few Republican women who have been elected statewide, so Jenna Griswold joins a, a small college of folks. Heidi yeah. is the only Republican woman. You know, it's time that we elect more women in this state. Here, here. Uh, Patty, uh, what do you take from this? What do you think Jenna Griswold takes away from this? 
Well, she narrowly escapes disgrace of the week because if this weren't a topic, I would make this the disgrace of the week. It wasn't just the way the poll was done, but the way the poll information was released to the media and some people fell for it as though this just happened to be a completely legitimate poll. If they wanted to test new names, how about throwing on John Hickenlooper so we at least could figure out what people are talking about when they say they think he could win. It was very disingenuous and as I said, some, some people fell for it.